A 1% increase in click-through rates or conversion rates can be a meaningful change in revenue based on, you know, depending on the size of that campaign or, or the, the price point or margin of the product or service you're selling through that funnel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Test, Optimize, and Scale. We have Chase Palmieri in the house today on the podcast to talk about credibility. Uh, a very important topic in this digital age. And we're going to be speaking about Credder, talking about content, talking about the vertical. Chase, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to yeah, join. Yeah, my pleasure. Happy to be here. Let's see, Where did your career begin? How did you go? Where did your path begin to the, the world and creation of Credder? Um, you know, if, if I'm really going all the way back, and I'll make it short, um, uh, for listeners, but uh, both my parents are serial entrepreneurs, so I kind of grew up watching them found and operate different businesses and and help them run different aspects of those businesses. And so then I went and got my degree in entrepreneurship and small business management. So kind of always knew that I was going to be my own boss or or build my own business someday, but didn't know what problem I really wanted to sink my teeth into. And so out of college, I went and was the radio show host and podcast host for Project Censored, which is a national nonprofit, nonpartisan media watchdog. And I've always had this passion for, um, you know, making the media more accountable, uh, making media accountable to news consumers and less so to advertisers and clickbait. And I was doing this role for Project Censored, but I felt like there was not really that much accountability, just me kind of uh, calling people out or bringing attention to things over the airwaves. And I started to look at my family's restaurant, which we've had for 16 years, and how accountable we are to the local community on platforms like Yelp and TripAdvisor. And I thought that, you know, if restaurant goers have this much accountability and can work together when deciding where to go eat and spend their dollars, why can't we as news consumers um, evaluate content and sources together in the same way using a rating system and uh, and make that rating system something that holds the media outlets and the individual staff writers accountable in a transparent way that is kind of just capturing the feedback of readers. And so uh, we started to think more about what a Rotten Tomatoes for News would look like, allowing verified journalists to rate content and sources under a critic score and the general public under a public score brought on the uh, the founder of Rotten Tomatoes as part of the team and then kind of start started building an early version of the product and going from there. Wow. So partnered with the founder of Rotten Tomatoes, looking to get that rating system, not just for, you know, we already use it for, for film, for restaurants. You gave the Yelp example and, and doing it for the actual news. So not judging mm -hmm. an article because a publisher's name sounds legitimate, but because you've actually dove in and got an understanding of uh, their traffic sources, their journalists, who's putting the content together, uh, not just a flashy logo. Yeah, I mean, Credder is really built around the word credibility. And we see credibility as just trust that is built over time. And so a creditor score is really just the uh, the reader's level of trust in each individual article from that staff writer or that outlet recorded transparently over time, building up into their creditor score. So uh, yeah, we're trying to basically become the credibility protocol for all of media, not just for the news consumers and, and providing that feedback to the authors and outlets, but as well, I'm sure we'll talk about more how we can pass that data and those scores down to other platforms like social media, search engines, and even advertisers. So I definitely want to talk about it from the advertiser perspective, being on the agency side, what it means in terms of ad placements and just content activations as a whole. But but want to start as the user. We all consume media. I hop on the Apple News in the morning, get in an aggregation of a bunch of different uh, you know, publishers. And part of it is, like you said, that word trust. It, it's difficult for me to trust what I read, even from credible sources in the sense that you, know, you have a, a political scale and there, there's writers on the far right, the far left, groups that claim to be in the middle, but are somewhere in between. You could have the same event occur and hear two completely different narratives on it accordingly. And it's not just politics. It, it could be for you know golf, 
there's a million things. I'm a golfer uh, on what I should be doing with my swing. It could be for, for travel, for, for, you know, you mentioned food questions on, Hey, is this paid for? Is this advertorial? Uh, I believe, and I say often people don't believe what they read, what they hear on the internet and social mm-hmm. proof, third party validation goes a long way. What does this mean for the user? How are they able to use the platform? Just, just to paint the picture for the audience. Yeah, and I guess just before I explain kind of the the actual user yeah. experience, you're absolutely right. It's it's a record distrust amongst news consumers worldwide, and, and especially in the United States. And uh, and this is a direct result of the clickbait and sensationalism in news, which is needed to drive advertising revenue. You have to capture attention and page views as a publisher if you want to survive. If you're you know, surviving based on ad revenue alone rather than subscriptions, which many of these publishers are. So that's the incentive model. And that's why we have what we have and why you rightfully experience the distrust that you do. Um, As for the user experience, Credder.com was what we launched in 2019. Uh, we originally launched it as a beta, but it's now a very fully fleshed uh, news review platform where anybody can come and use it, just like you said, with Apple News or, or people use Google News or Flipboard or whatever your news aggregator of choice is. Uh, Credit can be your top of the line news aggregator and that you can find these articles and, uh, and article feeds from any author or outlet that you want. You can post any article you want for the community to read. But what you have is this added layer where you see the reviews from your fellow readers that have seen that article before you, and you see the the historical ratings, the reputation scores, these creditor scores that are a zero to 100% score for each article, author, and outlet. Also, again, broken up by critic versus public score. So in the same way that... um, you know, critics might not like the new Fast and Furious movie, but audiences may love it. Uh, the same thing applies here. Sometimes you'll see that the critics uh, really liked a certain article, author, or outlet, but the general public responds differently. And what you can see with these two credit scores before you jump into an article and spend your next 15, 20 minutes reading it is you can see at a glance what kind of the establishment journalism class thinks about the quality of the content and what your everyday reader thinks about it. And so just like with Rotten Tomatoes, many people have their own kind of cutoff score where if I'm going to watch a movie at the end of a long day, I don't want to watch anything below maybe an 85 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's probably not worth my time. And the same thing applies with Credder. You'll read a couple articles that are in the 70s, maybe some in the 80s or 90s, and you'll decide what your cutoff score is where, you know, an article is worth your time and and maybe a cutoff score where it no longer is worth your time. What you're doing so relevant. I mean, I imagine it's going to get much worse with AI and streamlined systems to create massive amounts of content, whether it's on behalf of an author or a site or, you know, any organization looking to get more news out there. I, I, I tell people all the time, it's going to get tougher and tougher to understand what is real and what is narrative, uh, may I even say propaganda at times. Mm -hmm. So to be able to have trusted sources telling you, you know, this is a writer that's gotten 80%, 90% on past articles, they write for other publishers or this publisher uh, right now, because I know they change over time. Some of the sources I trusted years back, uh, I believe don't put out the same type of content today. And uh, it can be scary to think what it's going to look like in 10 10 years more uh, without the right parameters put in place. Yeah, I think what you're kind of calling out is that you're you're maybe like two steps deep, which is that now AI can become publishers and and writers of content. And what we've seen just since Credder has uh, founded its business is the move from establishment brands, publications, to now anybody can become their own publication on things like Substack and Medium. And it's very easy for an individual to kind of create their their own brand, their own publication, and go off and become their own brand. And now, as you're kind of noting, now even AI can go and do that at scale faster than Mm -hmm. those people can. And and so what you have here is a long tail of content and publishers that there's just no way for the average person to keep track of the quality in their own heads anymore. You you know, people maybe used to be able to keep track of, oh, here's the top 15 publishers in the world. 
maybe I trust these five out of the top 50 in the most, and you could kind of hold that in your head. But now, if you really want access to, to the internet's information and to really be on the cutting edge and, 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 and really be a, a news consumer today, you have to be willing to explore these other publications. And so there's no way for the average news consumer to keep track of that. And so Credor basically stores and holds that data so that you can at a glance see what your fellow consumer trusts or distrusts and why. And with video fakes, with you know various types of social sharing occurring, it could be very easy for something to feel credible. Uh, so again, very much applaud what you guys are doing. I think it's very needed in today's day and age. Yeah, thank you. What about on the uh, the business side, the 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 advertisers, the agencies? Uh, I know in the world of ad tech, when I first got involved, it was the early days, the wild wild west of of mobile advertising. Uh, we're talking two thousand eight to two thousand fourteen, and we didn't. Have, have tracking mechanisms uh, to the same sophistication that there is today. There, there's been limitations uh, around that uh, since about May 2021 with, with, with Apple users and what can be tracked off app. Uh, and analytics have had an element of, of storytelling with them. I've always been able to point out gray area holes in, in different reports, uh, regardless of you know first party, third party, Big name, small name, uh, software stack. I, I, I could I could tell you where where there's some some blind spots. So it can be difficult to tell what traffic is real, what traffic is is fake, it's just bots. Uh, there's tools to to help for it, but it, it could still be difficult. It can be tough to to gauge whether uh, press is going to aid or or hurt a campaign because of its domain authority, uh, it, it spam score, things along those lines. What does this mean for marketers that are looking to run advertising or publish organic content, earn media across a variety of different digital locations? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and obviously how you and I first began talking. And, and um, unfortunately, one of the first responses or reactions to this record level of distrust amongst news consumers is that brands are increasingly hesitant to run ad placements on news and information websites because they have certain values that may or may not align with the way that the, those stories are being presented. And it can really hurt a brand if to appear in the wrong place. And, and since there is at least before Credor and our ad targeting software, there's not been a reliable way at scale to determine where it is a safe and appropriate place to run your ad placement and which publishers are of high quality and where you're reaching people in what we refer to kind of as the trusting state of mind, right? And if you're a brand and you're advertising, you want to reach a consumer that is feeling in a safe place and trusted. And what Credor has basically aggregated in its database over the last five years is a database of the articles, authors, and outlets that consumers trust most. And so what Credor is coming to market with, and we're currently integrating with the Trade Desk to make this even easier for media buyers, is a way for you in one click to ensure that your ad placements are appearing on next to creditors, credible sources. So whether that's articles, authors, or outlets that have a 60% or higher creditor score. And so that not only provides some brand safety to the brand, which many folks talk about, but we also understand that at the end of the day, driving ad revenue uh, back to the business is the number one priority over and above brand safety. What the two-sided value prop with Credor is, yes, on one hand, the brand safety, but on the other side, it's actually an increased click-through rates and conversion rates on your ad placements because you're appearing in front of a user that is looking at content that they trust. And so when you appear where the consumer trusts, they're more trusting and willing to engage with your ad. Right. So an audience is more likely to trust an advertisement that's on uh, a trusted media source. Uh, I know some of them are big box advertising placements, but let's say a, a Forbes versus uh, uh, a, a blog that looks like it uh, reflects more of tabloid content that you'd see you know, a print uh, edition at a grocery store. Uh, if the content itself, if the publisher, the writer, uh, 
the outlet uh, is more trusted, uh, the performance is carrying that higher click-through rate and conversion rate. Um, real quick, j just to you know, talk about this for the audience a little bit, you mentioned the Trade Desk, which is a programmatic advertising platform, uh, which allows for media buyers to purchase advertising placements across, in some cases, hundreds, thousands of different published uh, you know, URLs at once. Yeah. Uh, and you're, you're optimizing towards performance. You're, you're often buying at wholesale rates and using technology to find the best day and time of week across each audience and ge ge geographical target, what have you. It's machine learning. But at the same time, there could be some questionable URLs just upon first glance, let alone if you dive into a, a long site list. So it, it's really you know, groundbreaking to hear about uh, a software that does that for you and based on information that, that users are providing based on scores that uh, have been produced by the audience, the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, Credder is providing you an insight into what the end consumer trusts and where they trust, and you can appear specifically on those places, which not only yeah makes you safer, but is going to result in, in a, a better ROI. Yeah. I recall seeing uh, screenshots from uh, early clients, and they uh, were showing up on sites they didn't want to, sites that were uh, on the wrong end of the political spectrum, uh, did not seem like uh, uh, tr true uh, articles and pieces of content, and wondering how they, they showed up there. And sometimes it was, hey, it's running on this second tier ad network within this ad exchange, we're gonna blacklist that site, uh, but that could be detrimental uh, for a brand. So being able to show up at the right place, let alone the performance, which, you know, whether they're branding advertiser or direct response at a certain point in the timeline that they're going to be looking for what's produced. So everyone's always looking for a strong result from their campaign. Yeah. And, and kind of what you're touching on there is what the substitute to Credder is in today's market, which is essentially these outdated inclusion and exclusion lists or white and black lists mm -hmm. that, you know, certain ad agencies or maybe uh, marketing departments at major brands have put together. Uh, and when we talk to folks, these are basically uh, Google spreadsheets or Google Docs that you know a couple of people in the marketing side of the business have access to, and every once in a while they'll throw a couple new URLs to the targeting side and a couple new URLs to the blacklist side, and at best we see these being you know a hundred URLs that you want to target and a hundred URLs that maybe you specifically don't want to target, but that's still that is not going to give you the scale you need for a proper programmatic ad campaign. You're going to need to be able to vet thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of different domains. And mm -hmm. you need to be able to do that really quickly. And so, um, yeah, that's that's really the difference. And not to mention the methodology uh, of how these URLs get added to the black or white list are sometimes arbitrary. And what we heard a lot was that they haven't actually updated those lists in years in some cases. And so Credder is constantly recommending articles, authors, and outlets to you to appear next to based on real-time consumer data. I, uh, I know some of those lists. And, yeah, uh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> ones that haven't been touched in years. Tier one site list from you know years back. Uh, how has the response been from the advertising community? Uh, how are you know agencies uh, working with Credder and, and what type of feedback are you getting? Um, what about client direct? What, what have the responses been? Yeah, so... Initially, we, um, you know, as we've been going through the the lengthy process of integrating with the Trade Desk and some of these other media buying platforms, we we tried going direct, and there is some interest there, but ultimately a person, a media buyer, a media planner does not want to manually deal with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of URLs. You know, in some cases they have those logs from their previous campaigns and they can quickly run those through our client dashboard, bounce them against our API, if you will, and, and get the results back. But they they really want that frictionless one-click button that they can just tack on to their their shopping cart when they're doing a programmatic buy through the trade desk or other media buying platforms. So 
Our direct deals ended up being mostly educational and setting folks up for when we go live. Uh, and so we have a bit of kind of pent up demand there. Um, but I can't say that we've done too much there. One, one client that we have had uh, is Oodle, a digital agency based out of Cincinnati. Uh, they've been using our software outside of Trade Desk, our direct software license for them and their own clients. And, uh, and it's still early days and we're putting together a first case study with them, but their media director has gone on record saying that yes, in fact, a higher Predator score does correlate with a higher performing ad placement. And for us, that's really the, the holy grail. We just want to validate that, yes, you know, as you get into those 90 to 100 percent credit scores, you're going to see an increasing rate of conversions as well. And as you get lower on that credit score, you're going to see a lower conversion rate on those ad placements. And if we can really demonstrate that through these early case studies with this agency and some of the, the early trade desk customers, we're going to really be armed with the data that we need that is, uh, I think, going to be very convincing in the market. Only way to measure is numbers, having those case studies, being able to show lifts and click-through rate and lower funnel metrics, cost per acquisition, uh, return on ad spend. Uh, it makes perfect sense, right? 90%, yeah. 60%, here, here's what it's showing at the end of the day in terms of the results. Yeah, especially in this market. I mean, you're not selling based on feelings. Uh, you know, the, the media buyers, they are looking for arbitrage opportunities or, you know, one cent or one percentage point differences in what can change the approach of a campaign. Because, uh, yeah, a 1% increase in click through rates or conversion rates can be a meaningful change in revenue based on, you know, depending on the size of that campaign or, or the, the, price point or margin of the product or service you're selling through that funnel. So yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we expect to have to prove uh, to the market that this is the real deal. So we've talked about the, the, the user journey. We've talked about how agencies and brands uh, are, are utilizing the technology. What, what about the publishers? I like to look at all sides of the table. Yeah. Imagine it's a different conversation from a 60% publisher to a 90%. But what have those uh, partnerships, what, is, what does the dynamic look like when you're speaking to publishers, uh, writers, outlets? Yeah. So with the publishers, um, you can imagine that the New York Times, Washington Posts of the world that have already kind of have these major established brand names, that they're less concerned with their credit score because they feel like, you know, traffic and subscribers are just going to keep coming in because they're the big names in news. And so the real opportunity for publishers who are leaning into credit and trying to optimize their credit scores are these either individual staff writers going off and creating their own publications or this, you know, middle tier, smaller publishers who are trying to compete for subscribers or traffic with the New York Times and Washington Post and basically saying, hey, look, you might not know us by our brand name, but our creditor score is a reason to give us a chance. And so one of the things that we're doing with publishers is we've actually given them the ability to embed creditors review process onto their own site articles. So that their own readers on their own site while remaining on their own site can actually rate their content. And then we feed these analytics in, in the form of dashboards and performance reports back to the publisher so that they can have a really nuanced look into how each article is gaining or losing reader trust, how each staff writer is gaining or losing reader trust, as well as, of course, the overall publication. And so what we've, we're seeing is folks who are going all in on this because they understand that if your loyal readers, the ones who are on your site daily, uh, if you give them a way to rate you, that those are probably the people who are going to rate you the best because they're your loyal readers. They already trust you. And so it's a great way for publishers to build out their scores while empowering their readers to hold them accountable, which in itself builds more brand trust because you're inviting the reader into the process. And you're, you're also capturing feedback at every stage on how you're losing or gaining the reader's trust. And so you can make changes based on that. And of course, from hiring and staff decisions, for the overall publication, very important as well, because a publication might see that so-and-so author 
uh, is generating a lot of traffic, and usually traffic, page views, clicks, these kinds of things are the only metrics that they really have insight into. But when you look at how much traffic a, a certain writer is getting, but you see that the traffic they're getting is actually resulting in a loss of brand trust, then perhaps you don't want to be promoting or giving all your best stories to that staff writer anymore. And so this becomes a, a really important editorial tool for that publication as well. Oh, and I guess last and perhaps most importantly, and, and of course, if I was talking to a publication, I would focus a lot of the conversation on this, which is that Credder is, of course, working with advertisers to make sure that their ad placements are appearing on high Credder score sites. And so if you are a publication that doesn't have a Credder score or doesn't have as good a Credder score as you should have to receive more of that ad spend, then that's a real financial incentive. It's, it becomes an investment in increasing your ad revenue to make sure you have a good credit score. Big fan of that closed loop uh, system as well too, where the article itself says, hey, you know, you can review on credit and, and you know, here's all the criteria. Uh, I, I think that definitely brings it all together and, and shows, you know, readers who are contemplating that source or advertisers who are looking into it, you know, an actual reading of a, uh, of, of what that conversation looks like between the reader and the, the, the writer. So fantastic stuff that you're, you're building here. I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's well needed and timely for the space. Uh, are there a lot of other groups doing this? Are there a lot of other tools? I know you talked about some of the outdated ones and some of the spreadsheets, whitelist, blacklist that uh, feel prehistoric at this point. Uh, are there a lot of other tools out there at the moment? Um, you know, we've kind of covered the substitutes that many folks in the space are using today. Our main two competitors, though, um, to name them would be NewsGuard and AdFontes Media. And um, they're also kind of doing well in the space, in this kind of news trust rating space, if you will. But the key difference is that Credder is not making these trust rating determinations ourselves. We built mm -hmm. a technology platform that aggregates the feedback of actual readers, whereas AdFontes and NewsGuard, they hire in-house uh, staff and contractors to go around and rate these outlets. And they do it in a way that's not very transparent. It's not the feedback of actual news consumers. And ultimately, because they're, they're paying for all of these ratings internally, it's based on a much smaller sample size of data than our crowdsourced approach. And so, you know, our, our approach takes longer because it, it required us to build out a technology platform first and then aggregate the data over time. But we feel strongly that our ratings actually represent news consumers trust and, uh, and that there's really no comparison when it comes time to go to content platforms like social media and search engines to base their content ranking algorithms on this stuff. If you want your users to not kind of revolt against you, they need to have a say in why the content or sources are, are being prioritized the way they are. And these platforms especially, which were our earlier customers, actually our first paying customers were these social media and search engine and news aggregator customers. They need to appear and remain neutral platforms. Uh, yes. and, and they do a lot to try to remain and appear neutral. And but no matter what, they do have content ranking algorithms in place, even you know, if they've never talked to Credder before. There are certain parameters that are determining that this outlet or this author, or this, out, uh, this article should appear higher in a search result or higher in a news feed. And what they can do now with Credder is they can just use our API and use Credder's scores to determine the ranking in those. And they can actually transparently display those scores for their users. And they can actually tell their users, if you don't like the way a certain article author outlet is appearing higher in our in our feeds, well, you and your fellow readers actually have the ability to go to Credder and change that score based on your ratings. You can participate in that process. And so they get to take a hands-off uh, approach just as Credder has taken that hands-off approach. I like the direct customer feedback. I remember reading about uh, you know early uh, Wikipedia where you know the day they made it open source and crowd contributed, they got more reviews, more uh, content added than the six months before that. Uh, I imagine you're able to cover a much greater portion of the web while having that authenticity. 
in the reviews. Yeah. Uh, imagine that that's why advertisers, users continue using you. And that's what I was looking for in that competitive separation. And it's very unique in terms of what you guys do. And must have been very difficult to build. Uh, and coming from this space, and like you said, there was more up front. Congrats on all the success here. What recommendations would you have for other founders who are listening in, in terms of what they could test towards their own model? This could be around, you know, overall business growth and product evolution. This could be uh, around the setup of their advertising campaign. Any tips that you can provide? Uh, you already mentioned, hey, if it's over 90%, this is what the conversion rate is going to look like. What tests would you uh, enroll the audience in? Well, assuming that there's a lot of marketing folks and, and people running campaigns listening to, to your podcast here, yes. uh, I would say that there are, if you get in touch with me, um, there are ways that you can basically test and taste creditors' software targeting uh, capabilities without paying. So, for example, if you have the URLs from a recent campaign. You know how they performed each of those URLs. You know what the click-through rates were. Um, you can feed that into our API, get the scores back. We'll rank that inventory on your behalf. You can keep blinders to us as to which URLs perform the best, and then you can see how our recommendation for those URLs aligned with what the actual performance was. And that's basically a way of back testing a previous campaign without having to, you know, A, B test it with new ad spend. And you can be like, oh, wow, uh, creditor has no idea how our campaign performed and how these URLs performed, but they're recommended, you know, prioritization of this inventory aligns really well with how our performance actually resulted in the wild. And therefore, now we have more confidence to, you know, sign an annual or multi-year contract with them or buy them through the trade desk when we run our next programmatic campaign. So I would say, uh, you know, we are a startup. We're early days. We're just coming to market with this new uh, targeting capability for the brands and agencies. And because of that, there's an opportunity for you to get in touch with me, deal directly with me, you know, whether we need to build something customized for you or we need to kind of hold your hand through this process. We'll be happy to do that. Um, we're creating new case studies with all of these early customers. We, we can give discounted rates for the folks that are willing to work with us on a case study. So I'd just say, you know, this doesn't have to be something that adds too much expense to your campaign. And, and, uh, and we can test this in ways that are, that are basically cost free. That's a very kind invitation. Definitely encourage audiences to take chase up on that. Marketing is a series of tests. Why, why wouldn't you test it hearing that? And I, I say so, you know, authentically. Um, I want to ask a couple more questions. Uh, what about optimization? You know, as an advertising expert, uh, as someone who you know, I'd say has a unique perspective uh, on quality uh, of different publications, writers, outlets, what do you do when a campaign's not working? You know, let's say it's the first week first month of a campaign with credit, uh, you know, utilizing a programmatic exchange such as the trade desk. And the results you know, aren't, aren't quite there yet. And as you said, it's aggressive. Everyone's looking at metrics. What have been the best approaches towards optimization uh, for you uh, and your campaigns to date? Well, if we're assuming that you kind of have already um, A-B tested a campaign with or without Credder, um, then what I would say is when targeting Predator's credible sources and running a campaign, I think you should really consider uh, the ad itself, right? You have to have, you have to be testing different messaging, different uh, visuals. Uh, and so I would, I would argue that, you know, when you're targeting to Credder, you can also change the parameters. So for example, if you wanted to limit your reach, but make sure you're only showing up on the absolute premium inventory, you can change mid-campaign and start to do that. You can target based on 90 to 100% only credit scores and, and just reach the, you know, the cream of the crop. But I would say that you should always be testing different, uh, different ad placements themselves within that campaign because uh, messaging and visual can, can also have a, a, a huge role to play there. What about when you get it dialed and it's time to scale? 
any tips, any examples? You find the sites that are performing for you. Is it a matter of just buying more inventory? What if the CPMs get too high? What, what are some thoughts towards scale? You know, if you're really ready to scale and you've identified through Credder what your best performing publications are, um, because you've run a few campaigns with Credder, again, our mission is to drive more ad revenue. Our mission with this side of the business anyway is to drive more ad revenue to the credible publishers, to basically reward those high quality publishers and staff writers with more ad revenue, more traffic, and more prominence in the kind of media landscape. And so if you end up finding that uh, you've got five publications that for whatever reason, when you run your Nike shoe ad placements, the people on those sites just convert at an, a much higher rate than other sites. Well, great. Now you can, if you want, go ahead and make a direct deal with that publication and you can scale up that way. You can go and, and become 20% of all of the ad placements on that site. And, and if you're really ready to scale, you can negotiate a good direct deal with that publication. My only ask would be that if you find that publication through Creditor's targeting initially, that you let that publication know that, uh, that Creditor helps send them your way. It's the Creditor score. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chase, this has been fantastic. I've had all different types of media buying experts on the podcast, and we, we have not dove uh, to this depth in terms of credibility, uh, actual quality of the publications, and been able to tie that to performance. Uh, I think the platform that you built uh, is fantastic uh, and would definitely encourage users to, to take you up on that test. Uh, are there any final thoughts that you want to leave everybody with as we begin to wrap up today? And, and what's the best way for them to, to learn more about Credder? I guess um, final thoughts is just I'll reiterate Creditor's mission, which is to make news compete for credibility, not clicks. And obviously, in order to help do so, we need to address the financial incentives that drive clickbait. And so that's really why Creditor is coming to market here. Uh, I want to make sure that our news consumer audience, which we provide services for free to, and our publishers that we provide those embedded review forms for free to, uh, that they realize we, we do need to sustain the business. That's why we license our data and our software to the, the content platforms and the advertisers. And that ultimately, the only way for us to really make the voices of news consumers matter and affect change in the industry is to put their scores in the hands of advertisers, the, the people that are driving the revenue incentives in the first place. And so this we have a multi-stakeholder approach here that allows news consumers' voices to basically be projected out to all these different areas where, uh, where the incentives are broken and to right these wrongs. And uh, as for ways to reach me, you can always shoot me a direct email to chase at creditor.com. Predator, of course, spelled C-R-E-D-D-E-R. Uh, and you can also visit Credder.com and you can see the different solutions we have outlined for all the different stakeholders, which again are the news consumers, the publishers, the content platforms, and now the brands and ad agencies running programmatic. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Chase, it's uh, it's been a privilege. Really enjoyed the conversation today. I want to thank you again for taking the time to come on to the Test Optimize Scale podcast. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason. Talk to you soon. We'll see everybody next time. Take care.